Hello everyone, and welcome to a video I'm very excited to bring to you. This video is all thanks to Pakreek, one of our producers and mods, and friends, here on the channel. The brand new World of Warcraft expansion Battle for Azeroth is live for everyone worldwide at 3pm PDT on Monday the 13th. And just like any other expansion, there is a ton to look forward to. So, let's get into the top 10 things I'm looking forward to in Battle for Azeroth. Number 10. Allied Races. Now, I'm not the biggest fan of Allied Races. I personally feel that a lot of them should really just be cosmetic choices. Hello, Lightforged Draenei. But the Xandalari Trolls and the Kul Tiran Humans bring something really unique that you can't find with the current Trolls and Humans. First off, Druids. Both of these races will have druids available as a class choice, and holy cannoli, the forms are beautiful. You could be wicker bears or a little ankylosaurus looking dude, not to mention the really sweet looking Xandalari balance forms. But even better, this finally brings another druid choice to the alliance, something we haven't had since Cataclysm. Worgen and Night Elves? Boring. Fat humans? Perfect. I'm less excited about the Magar and Dark Iron, but they do come with some really neat racials. I think the thing I'm looking forward to the most regarding allied races in Battle for Azeroth is the future. What other races are on Azeroth and beyond that might find a home with the Horde or Alliance? Number 9. Mounts. There are so many new mounts coming in this expansion that it is kind of insane, and some of them are unlike anything we've had before, like, you know, a giant bumblebee. An actual bee, like the insect. What? Let's be honest, I need more mounts to farm. You can never have too many mounts, and there will be no less than three mounts that drop from five-man dungeons. And I personally really miss running five-mans over and over and over again trying for the one Rivendare mount that won't drop for ten years! Anywho, there are some really unique models coming that we get to ride on from a whole slew of different content. From raids, to reputations, to war fronts and island expeditions. We will be pretty busy trying to collect them all in this expansion. Oh, and uh, have you seen the hyenas from Voldoon? So good! Number 8. War Mode and Honor Changes. Yes, I know. We got this in 8.0, but I had the most fun creating my own adventures out in Darkshore during the pre-launch event. Using the world quest as simply a means of getting into skirmishes was much fun, and yes, I know this is a feature that's existed on PvP servers since WoW was created, but now I get to choose when I want to throw my shield into an orc's face without having to roll on a completely new server. And the honor changes? This is great for someone who has as many capped alts as I have. Not only can I decide when to PvP, but on who and how. It's going to be incredibly good fun, especially on streams, to be getting my butt kicked on a lowly geared alt to just then switch over to my paladin main and kick some butt in return. Or get my butt kicked in return. And world questing? Even better. If you get bored doing basic kill and collection quests, just wait for the next unsuspecting alliance to roll up and create your own fun. Number 7. Warfronts. Okay, listen. When I was younger, I played Pokemon, Final Fantasy, and Warcraft 3. A lot of Warcraft 3. Warfronts feel like such a callback to the RTS roots of Warcraft that I can't wait to join my guild, queue up, and take over an entire enemy fortress or enemy holding. Now, I didn't do too much on the beta for Battle for Azeroth, but I spent lots of time off stream rocking the Warfronts whenever they were available. Rumor has it that the Barons or even Theramore might be a future Warfront, and that tells me that these could have huge ramifications on the future of BFA and potentially beyond. And those Warfront armor sets? They are incredible. Especially that Alliance plate set, which might be the best set I've ever seen in-game. I'm also very interested in the gameplay loop that Warfront creates. A massive region-wide effort to build resources to attack whoever is holding Stromgarde and claim the city. And when you are in control, you have access to unique world bosses and world quests, giving you a reason to be invested in the war effort. Now, Warfronts doesn't actually become available until the raid releases, but that doesn't stop me from being super excited for this piece of 20-man PvE content. Number 6. New Zones and Artwork This is something I get excited about every expansion because we are literally never let down. The art is always stunning, and this expansion is seriously beautiful. Drusvar is straight up creep, and you can really feel that the art team had fun making it creepy. 
Zoldazar and Boralus are some of the most stunning pieces I've ever seen in World of Warcraft, and the music sets the mood perfectly throughout these new islands. In fact, if you are one of those monsters who plays with game sounds off, don't. At least for a little while. The ambience in these zones is pure perfection here. Technically, we have six new zones, three for each side, but eventually, once we reach a high enough rep with a certain faction, we will be able to do quests on the opposing faction's island. The homeland of the Zandalari Trolls brings not only amazing, unique architecture, but also new creatures and updated models of creatures we've seen before. And the home of the Kul'tirans really captures how tough and tumble these seafaring people really are. Overall, I find these zones incredibly immersive, and I can't wait to explore every nook and cranny of them. Number 5. New Dungeons Yeah, I know, this comes with every expansion, and honestly, the dungeons get old kinda quick. That is, before Legion introduced the incredible Mythic Plus system, something I think has revolutionized group play in World of Warcraft. And you can tell that these dungeons here in BFA were designed with Mythic Plus in mind. Not only are we getting 10 brand new dungeons with a release, but my guess is that with the reintroduction of Five Mans as competitive endgame content, we will be seeing even more Five Man dungeons coming out as the expansion proceeds, and I'm willing to bet more than we've seen in recent expansions. Not to mention the new affixes that are being introduced in BFA. And let's be honest, the Mythic Dungeon Invitational has been an absolute delight to watch. It's only going to get bigger and better from here, folks. Number 4. Raids Now, I've never been a huge raider, and they haven't always been that important to me, mostly because they're always good. But, now with my own guild and actually getting heroic raiding in on an actual team, I'm so excited to see the boss encounters that Blizzard has whipped up for us. Yeah, the story of raids is usually always cool, and seeing some familiar and surprise faces is going to be really fun. But I'm talking about the actual mechanics. Every new raid tier throws something unique at us, something we haven't had to do before. And learning how to deal with that is some of the most rewarding experiences WoW has to offer. I'm looking to really push myself and my raid team this expansion, and maybe see a couple of our first ever mythic boss kills. We'll have to wait until September 4th to see the first raid of BFA, but Oldir, the Titan Compound, is really, really looking to impress. But when it comes to raids, there's something else I'm really looking forward to. The imminent showdown with Queen Ajara herself. Number 3. Solo Mage Tower-esque Challenges Anyone that has watched my streams in the past few months knows that I became obsessed with the Legion Mage Towers, and ultimately ended up completing every single one. And yes, I said that part because I'm still so damn proud of myself. Anyways, I am sincerely hoping that they add something similar to BFA, something solo or really challenging for every spec in the game, preferably tied directly to either our class or perhaps our faction. Imagine a rogue solo scenario in which you must stealth your way through an enemy encampment, poisoning as you go and facing off against an incredibly challenging alliance general who caught you in the act. Not only did these really test our knowledge of our class, but our abilities as players without anyone to blame for failure except yourself. Or Blizzard. And that feels so rewarding. Now, I have no idea if this is something that is even going to be coming out in Battle for Azeroth. I could be getting my hopes up. But with the success of Mage Towers and Legion, I think Blizzard would be missing a really wonderful opportunity to challenge us and give us some really interesting rewards. Let's just say I'm holding my breath. Number two. This is something that I didn't think I was as excited about until I wrote the script for this video. Island Expeditions are coming, and will be one of the best ways to get Azerite for your new Heart of Azeroth neck piece. Now, I'll be honest, I tested this content in early alpha and I was not impressed. It felt like we were simply running around killing random enemies and collecting super small amounts of Azerite while simultaneously stopping a group of sorta smart AI of the opposite faction. It was easy, a little confusing, and a lot tedious. But I'm happy to report that that has changed. The AI is incredibly smart and punishing, and the different level of difficulties adds some nice variety, especially considering that this content is only for parties of three. But you know what is even more challenging than the very intuitive AI that Blizzard has designed? Actual, living, breathing players. There is, in fact, a PvP difficulty, which is essentially mythic level difficulty with three real opposing faction players, and is honestly the way this should be played. 
The amount of strategies you and your team can, can employ are endless. There is so much happening during these island expeditions, and I could easily do an entire video on them. In fact, let me know if that's something you'd like to see in the comments below. At launch, we will have seven maps that we can queue for, and I'm expecting there to be many more maps added during the expansion. Between all of the invasion events and consumables that you can use during these expeditions, I'm thinking that this is content that will certainly stand the test of time. Number one. Drum roll, please. The big shebang. Horde versus Alliance, Nazoth in the Void, the Windrunners, Anduin's Ascension. This expansion is looking to be one of the most lore heavy we've ever seen. And if the extended media has shown us anything, it's that Blizzard is setting us up for more dips and dives than that flimsy wooden roller coaster at Six Flags. And to be honest, they kind of have to. Where do we go after defeating the biggest threat to the universe, the Burning Legion? Surely we aren't going to simply go back to a story about just Sylvanas throwing a giant bonfire and Jaina showing up on one hell of a disco ship. No, they are setting us up for something way more. But before we get to that more, we still have a very deep personal story to tell. We have characters, people with flaws and doubts and weaknesses who are making mistakes and some redeeming themselves. Some who might be going too far over the line to protect their people. Some who would give anything and pay any price to save their home. And I personally think that Christy Golden, who is wonderful at writing really thought-provoking characters in her novel, is going to bring that to the game. Honestly, I have no idea where the Alliance vs. Horde story is going, but I know one thing. Neither of us will win. We all lose in this war because more is coming. And no. I don't think it's that Sylvanas is corrupted. I think we will see the rise of the Void in this expansion, and I wouldn't be surprised if Illyria is the catalyst. During the first year of raiding in Legion, we were told many things from Ilganoth, and almost none of them have happened yet, that we know of. Her heart is a crater and we have filled it? The Boy King sits at the Master's table. What does this all mean? I have a strong feeling that we will get at least some of these answers during Battle for Azeroth, but I actually hope not all of them. This is unprecedented grounds for Blizzard. We are running out of known villains and known threats, and that is actually incredibly exciting. We are in for so many surprises, and I have no doubts that we will see plenty of them throughout the Battle for Azeroth. And there you have it. My top 10 things I'm looking forward to most in Battle for Azeroth. Huge thank you to Pakrik for producing this video. I would not be able to create stuff like this if it wasn't for his and many others generous support here on YouTube and Patreon. Thank you so much for watching. If you liked it, please give it a thumbs up and let me know what you are looking forward to in this expansion. And remember, never give up, never surrender to the void.